Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get it done, you can get the show notes and more at drleewarren.pod com. That's drleewarren.podbean.com. And if you'd like the show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Hey, good morning, friend hope things are going well for you today. It's pretty foggy outside here on the river. It's early in the morning. Uh, 10th day of June, 2022, believe it or not. Hey, will you do me a favor? This is Lisa listens to the podcast. You just heard her voice. I think that's so cool that she did that for me. Um, it's almost Lisa's birthday. Now, she always listens to the podcast, but she's a few days behind, so she won't hear this before her birthday. But her birthday is next Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. So will you do me a favor? If you love the show, if you love the newsletter, if you love the work that we're doing together to try to bring a good word uh, to you around the world every day, send Lisa a little note. Would you send her an email? Lisa at LisaWarren.com on Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. Just send her a quick little happy birthday. Um, That would be really cool. She wouldn't expect it, and I think it would be awesome if she heard just the impact that she's having around the world. If if uh, her work uh, here supporting the podcast and the newsletter and all the great things that she does to make my life better um, have touched you in any way, then uh, shoot her a little email on Tuesday, June 14th. Tuesday, June 14th. Lisa at LisaWarren.com. She's going to kill me when she finds out I did that, by the way. Maybe not actually kill me, but she is so humble and she never just never seeks any credit for herself and always is at work and making things beautiful. We opened our new office this week. Um, we are so grateful. The Great Plains Health uh, Administration, Ivan Mitchell, and all the other great folks there um, built us a completely new office. But Lisa and I worked together for 12 years in Alabama, and she was an interior designer before she ran our practice. And when we needed a new office in Alabama, she designed and built it, and it was based on the psychology of healthcare and all the latest research on how doctors' offices work most efficiently and all that, and, and we built a, a six thousand square foot facility in Alabama that we ran together for years and years, and it was state of the art. And many people, many practices uh, came and studied our design, her design, and our workflow. And when we came here to Great Plains Health, the the CEO at the time, Mel and Ivan, who was at the time COO, Chief Operating Officer, who's now the CEO. Um, they said, hey, we got to build a new space, and, y- and y'all's previous history was so great. Why don't we just build a similar office? Why don't you design a space? Here's the floor. Here's the available space inside the hospital that we have. Why don't, Lisa, why don't you do what you did before and build us a new facility? So she did, and it's unbelievable. And we, uh, after two years of working in a temporary space, um, the doors opened this week, and we saw, I don't know, 60 people maybe uh, this week in the new office, and it's just amazing. So... I'm so grateful for Lisa and the many things that she does well. And um, if you're grateful for her too, shoot her a little email on Tuesday, lisa at lisawarren.com. Thanks. Hey, um, a couple of other things uh, before we get started today. I want to tell you about my friend Weldon Lister. Um, You know, I've done some reverse commercials on the podcast before, Um, little um, organizations or people that we like to sponsor. One of them is Tommy Walker. Let me play a Tommy's ad here. Here's This is a reverse commercial that we did uh, for Tommy Walker back in season two, I think. And uh, this is kind of what a reverse commercial sounds like. And I want to remind you uh, the great work that Tommy's doing all around the world. Here we go. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. 
Hi, I'm Tommy Walker, and I've been a worship leader and songwriter for over 30 years. By God's amazing grace, he's allowed me to write some worship songs that have been sung in churches all over the world. In 2015, I started my own nonprofit called Tommy Walker Ministry so I could start giving away all my songs and music and worship resources. Since then, we've had people from over 80 nations download our charts and performance tracks, and we've given away over 100,000 of them now, and we're so blessed and honored to do it. We have a passion to declare the gospel through worship in a powerful way, so we're so careful to fill up our songs and our videos with God's Word. And if you're interested in becoming a partner with us, just visit TommyWalkerMinistries.org and become a one-time or monthly partner. We'd be so grateful. And let me just say God's richest blessings on you all. If you aren't already, become a passionate worshiper of the Most High God. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Thanks, Tommy. Hey, um... Lisa and I are supporters of Tommy Walker Ministries and several others, and and the reason that we don't put ads on the podcast is because we want to make sure that the content is always about the content and not about what sponsors might want. So so we haven't chosen or ever really considered having advertisers on the podcast, but we do want to bring you – information about people, products, ministries, or companies that we believe in, support, or use ourselves, that sort of thing. Well, my friend Weldon Lister from San Antonio, Weldon and I met, uh, we were both playing guitar on the praise band at Oak Hills Church back in the day when I lived in San Antonio. Weldon and I met, and Weldon turns out to be a master engraver, a master of the practice a master practitioner of scroll art. Now, if you if you don't know what that is, you've probably seen um, old Western guns or items that were that were engraved with scroll and just beautiful detailed carvings on the handles of pistols and that sort of thing. Weldon's just a master engraver, master scroll artist, and he has started a really cool new company where they've taken that concept of his scroll art and they put it on apparel, t-shirts, and hats, and they even have they're sponsoring a NASCAR. Car, uh, car this year, and they have a partnership with Uncle Cy from Duck Dynasty, and they're just doing some really cool things. These are great Christian people, and they're just a small company that started a new thing. And I just want to give them a moment uh, to let you hear about American Scroll Weldon's company and the work that they're doing. And they also have another website, Uncle Cy. If you know Cy from Duck Dynasty, S I Uncle Cy dot com, they have that website too. They're doing some some cool stuff in partnership with Uncle Cy, and ultimately helping to spread the gospel and the, and the great message that Cy preaches um just a just a really cool relationship that they have um uncle si actually called me the other day with weldon to tell me he had read my book i've seen the interview and i'm hoping someday maybe get him on the podcast to talk about that uh, or to just talk about uncle si he's such a cool guy but weldon uh, has this new company american scroll and i just want to give him a moment to tell you all about it here's weldon hey folks this is weldon lister with american scroll and we're a proud sponsor of the dr lee warren podcast You might ask, well, what is American Scroll? And I would say, hey, we're an apparel brand that's based on the scroll art that I've developed as a master engraver. You can find more about American Scroll and see our products at americanscroll.com or unclesci.com. And as a special for the Dr. Lee Warren podcast listeners, just use Dr. Lee at checkout and you'll get 20% off. Thanks and have a great day. I told you he was cool. So Weldon uh, is is just doing some really cool stuff, and I want you to check it out. That's a, a little reverse commercial for American Scroll. Don't forget the checkout code, Dr. Lee, D-R-L-E-E. At checkout, you'll get 20% off. Get some cool T-shirts and hats. Support this, this family, this startup company. Um, in America, you can still go out and do something cool on your own. And uh, I just want to give Weldon a shout out. Great guy, great family, great Texas uh, Christian people. And just just check out americanscroll.com, okay? Hey, one more thing before we get started. I need you to pray about something for me. Um, my mom had surgery yesterday in Dallas. My mom, Sue Warren, uh, just an amazing lady, um, gave me all the half the genetic, more than half the genetic material that I have. You know that, right? You don't get half your genetic material from your dad. You get almost half from your dad, and you get more than half from your mom because all of your mitochondrial DNA comes from your mother. So anyway, a little more than half of me came from Sue Warren, and I'm grateful and just in awe of all the things that she does as a human being, loves the Lord, just a passionate person for her family, and and um, 
she's just a really amazing lady. But she had surgery yesterday. She fell a few weeks ago and actually fractured three bones in her back and broke one of her ribs. And she's been in a lot of pain. And, and my friend uh, Brian, who's a neurosurgeon in Dallas, did a procedure for her yesterday that hopefully will relieve her of her pain. But just pray for my mom that she'll feel better. She's been hurting a lot. And uh, if you just lift her up in prayer, that would be amazing. Um, if you want to send me an email to encourage mom, I'll forward it to her. Um, Lee at drleewarren.com. But I just uh, would appreciate prayers for my mother, Sue Warren, in Dallas. And she's going to get better and, and feel better and not have any more issues and be able to get around and kind of get back to her life. She's been pretty hampered for a few weeks. Um, and it's kind of frustrating for me when a member of my family or one of my loved ones has a problem that I treat and I take care of, but I'm not there to take care of them. Um, just a little frustrating. And, and uh, just know that Brian did a good job taking care of her yesterday and pray that mom gets really, really good pain relief and that she feels better. Okay, that is a lot of preamble for a really short episode, but I got just a a quick idea for you. I've been reading um, a book by Eugene Peterson. Um, My Bible reading lately, I was doing the New Testament in 24 weeks, and now I'm up to the end of the New Testament, and I'm, I'm at the Revelation. And in Revelation 10, there's a little weird verse where the angel comes and he gives uh, John a scroll. He says, uh, verse 9, ch- chapter 10, verse 8 and 9, um, 8, The voice from heaven spoke to me again, Go and take the open scroll from the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll, the little scroll, says in another version. Yes, take it and eat it, he said. It will be sweet as honey in your mouth, but it will turn sour in your stomach. So I took the small scroll from the hand of the angel and I ate it. It was sweet in my mouth, but when I swallowed it, it turns sour in my stomach. That's a weird little passage, right? It's a little scroll that he eats, and it tastes like honey, but it turns sour in his mouth. And the point is, God's Word is good for you to chew on, and it's good for you to eat, but when it's time to share it with other people, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes um, sometimes people don't receive it very well. Sometimes Sometimes you don't feel comfortable sharing the word, talking about it to other people. It kind of it kind of burns inside you because you don't know what to do with it, and that's a little bit probably not exactly the whole point of that passage, but that's that's part of it. Is the word that you taste is sweet, but sometimes it turns bitter in your in your stomach, and that is because people don't receive it the way you want, or you're not willing to share it. And that reminded me, there's another passage in Ezekiel chapter two where something very similar happens. So. Um, God comes to the the prophet Ezekiel, and he says, You must give the people my messages, whether they listen or not. But they won't listen, for they are completely rebellious. Son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not join them in their rebellion. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And I looked and saw a hand reaching out to me and held a scroll, which he unrolled. And I saw that both sides were covered with funeral songs, words of sorrow, and pronouncements of doom. That sounds terrible, right? And by the way, I'm never going to give you funeral songs, words of sorrow, and pronouncements of doom, okay? The reason that I get up every day to talk to you is because Proverbs fifteen twenty three says, everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It is wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. I'm just trying to give you the good word, okay? But sometimes you have some words that aren't so easy, right? Sometimes you have some words that you need to share with other people. The, the, the truth and our society right now doesn't really want to hear the truth so Ezekiel says God told me to eat this book to eat this scroll and I did and for chapter 3 it starts the voice said to me son of man eat what I'm giving you eat this scroll and go and give its message to the people and I opened my mouth and he fed me the scroll he said fill your stomach with this and when I ate it it tasted sweet as honey in my mouth so again, there's two different places where we're told when you eat the Word of God, when you when you digest and intake the Word of God, it tastes sweet to you. It's good stuff. It's not always easy to share it with other people. It's not always easy to tell the truth to other people because we're, we're afraid, we're timid, we're scared to share the Word, we're scared to, to speak up when we know that we have a good Word because we're worried about how people will receive it, right? That's a whole other story for a whole other day. But I've been reading this book called Eat This Book. It's an old book by Eugene Peterson. I'm just deep into Eugene Peterson right now. I've been reading a lot of his works lately. It's the third one of his books that I've read recently. And in this book, the whole idea is about this spiritual practice of how we read 
and what we read and the way that we process the things that we read and then what do we do with them, right? And he tells a story that I was reminded of the other day. I read this book a long time ago. I'm reading it again. And I, I saw the other day Harvey and Lewis were outside and they had dug up somewhere the, the horrible mummified remains of a dead sandhill crane and they had spread it all over the yard there were feathers and bones and legs and all just horrible stuff all over the yard but they were both sitting there both of them had a leg bone um, of this crane and they were they were worrying it they were they were just kind of hovered over it down on the ground kind of gnawing and, and they're making this kind of low rumbling growl they were so delighted to be eating this bone and eating this crane even though it's gross to me but it, it it reminded me eugene peterson told a story uh, something similar about a dog that he had one time and they were they were out for a walk he and his wife and the dog found a deer a dead deer and he, he grabbed one of the bones and he was just so excited he was running around and showing it to him and prancing and like harvey with the gopher the other day stopped me on the tractor to show me how proud he was that he caught this gopher well eugene peterson's dog was was happy and wanted to show and share what he had found he wanted to, to get get petted for it get praised for it he wanted to, to be noticed for the bone that he had found right but then after that after a little while he took the bone off to a, a private place so he could sit by himself and really enjoy it and eugene wrote this the social aspects of the bone were behind him now the pleasure became solitary he gnawed the bone turned it over and around licked it worried it sometimes we could hear a low rumble or growl in a cat, it would be like a purr. He was obviously enjoying himself and in no hurry. After a leisurely couple of hours, he would bury it and return the next day to take it up again. An average bone would last about a week. So he, what he's doing here, the dog has gone from just talking about or socially sharing the idea that he had found a bone or he was reading this book or he was doing this thing. Now he was... Now he was taking it to another level. He was spending time with it and enjoying it and, and kind of grumbling and growling and, and muttering and chewing on it, right? He was really getting into enjoying this bone. That's what Harvey and Lewis were doing. Well, Eugene points out a couple of different places in the Bible where there's a Hebrew word, Hagah, H-A-G-A-H, Hagah. And it's translated in two different ways. In Psalm 1, it's translated, Psalm 1 says, um, blessed is the man or woman whose delight is in the law of the Lord. He meditates on it day and night. And that word meditate there is Hagah. And so sometimes it's, it's, it's translated meditate, which we sort of take as thinking about or spending some time with, that sort of thing. But in Isaiah, Isaiah found the, the, the poet prophet Isaiah, uh, Eugene says it this way. Um, while reading Isaiah, I found the poet prophet observing something similar to what I enjoyed so much in my dog, except that his animal was a lion instead of a dog. Isaiah 31, 4, as a lion or a young lion growls over his prey. And the word growl is Hagah. And so the same word, Hagah, is translated meditate in the psalm, and it's translated growl over in Isaiah. And here's what it means. Growls is the word that caught his attention, Eugene's attention, and brought that little pop of delight. What Eugene's dog did over his precious bone, making those low, throaty rumbles of pleasure as he gnawed, enjoyed, and savored his prize. That's what Isaiah's lion was doing to his prey. Peterson says, The nugget of my delight was noticing the Hebrew word hagah, here translated as growl, but usually translated as meditate. But Isaiah uses the word to refer to a lion growling over his prey the way my dog worried a bone. Hagah is a word that our Hebrew ancestors used frequently for reading the kind of writing that deals with our souls. But meditate is far too tame a word for what is being signified. Now, this is what I want you to get. This is the only point of this thing. When Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, that word taste and see is Hagah. Isaiah says the same word a few pages later for the cooing of a dove, by the way. So he talks about the, the lion grumbling over the bone. A few pages later in thirty eight fourteen, Isaiah says about cooing, how doves coo. The, the word reflects this idea that you're just so caught up in and studying and reading and delighting in the word that you're just moaning a little bit, making a little sound like, you, like a dog does when he's eating a bone. One careful reader of the text caught the spirit of the word when he said that Hagah means that a person is lost in his religion, Peterson says, which is exactly what the dog is with his bone. That's what Harvey and Lewis were doing with the Sandhill Crane. There's a, there's a connotation, a guy named Baron Friedrich von Hugel 
Peterson wrote about had written that this this idea of Hagah is kind of letting a, a lozenge or a cough drop kind of sit in your mouth and just slowly dissolve and you're and you're just you just not chewing it up and swallowing it really fast. You're not just quickly eating it and going on to something else. You're you're sitting with it. You're 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 sucking on it. You're letting it melt into you and become part of you as that lozenge slowly dissolves. I'm telling you this because I want you to get this idea that the word of God should not be just something you check off your list every day, not be something you just read your daily Bible reading really fast or occasionally flip it open or take it to church with you. The Word of God is meant to infiltrate your life. It's meant to to be enjoyed and stewed over and and chewed on and grumbled over and 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 really taken to a private place and ingested and to become part of who you are. It's meant to delight you and fill you up. And and my treatment plan for how we deal with the massive things in our life that I wrote about in my new book, Hope is the First Dose, which, by the way, has a new subtitle of publishers, and, and we have come up with a new subtitle, and I'll share it with you soon. Um, it, was, it started out as uh, the treatment plan to turn hopelessness into happiness when the massive thing happens. The publisher felt like that was not the right subtitle. So we got a new one, and it's really I'm really excited about it. But the idea behind the treatment plan, or how, what do you do when life really wipes you out? The treatment plan involves having some prehab, and the prehab is having some good stuff in your heart and in your head so that you don't forget what's true when your feelings make you think that everything's falling apart. Because feelings aren't facts, right? So how, how do you get that good stuff in you? Well, it's Hagah. It's spending some time with, with the good word of the Lord, with some good music, with some, some good ideas, some good thoughts, some memories of how God always keeps his promises and how he won't let you down this time either, how Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever so that when life wipes you out and the floor feels like it goes away, you realize that's just a feeling and you put your feet down and the floor is solid because as Mark Rogev said, God, Jesus paid the price for the floor of your suffering. There is a floor, right? You feel like there's not, but feelings aren't facts. Now, I want to challenge you. I know one listener out there, I know one person, a friend of mine, dear person I love very much, loves to read romance novels, loves to read Harry Potter, loves to read all those things. I'm going to challenge you. Take a look at your Audible library. Take a look at your Kindle library. Take a look at the books on your shelf if you're a reader. And notice how many of those books are secular and how many of them have something to do with the Word of God. Have something to do with how to get this meat into your life, this prehab into your life. And if it's been a while since you read something other than a secular book, a romance novel, a a Harry Potter, a, a great novel like Beekeeper of Aleppo, if it's been a while since you read something other than that, I just challenge you, pick up a Eugene Peterson book, pick up a Max Locato book, or if you want something deeper, something more like like mental gymnastics, pick up a Philip Yancey book. Start with The Jesus I Never Knew or What's So Amazing About Grace. If you really want to go deep, pick up a Dane Ortland book like Deeper or Gentle and Lowly. Or if you need to learn some prayer language, pick up a great book from Mark Rogep like Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy. There's some There's some books out there that will help you get deep into the Word and understand what you're reading and give you something to gnaw and give you something to haga, to, to growl over. And you'll find that, that you're, you're filling your mind and your heart with something that's not so superficial. That's not just about getting a story into your head and passing the time and you know, driving downtown and back to your house and listening to something, but something that's going to get in there and actually filtrate, infiltrate into your nerve endings and start putting up a little screen against some of the bullets that are coming at you. It's going to start to feel like some body armor for you. It's going to start to feel like something to protect your head. And, you know, Paul calls it the helmet of the hope of salvation. You'll start to feel like you're a little more armored, like you're a little more protected, like you've got a little bit more leeway in your heart to, to deal with some of the things that are coming along because they are coming along, right? You're going to have some hard times. So I'm just saying all that to say this, this this Peterson idea of eat this book, the two places where the angel said to Ezekiel and to John, eat this. Like this this book is to be devoured. It's to be not just quickly taken in, but it's to be spent to, to for time to be spent with it. It's to growl and grumble over like Harvey and Lewis do out in the yard with those bones. It's it's something deep for you, my friend. And that's all I got for you today. I just I just wanted to kind of share this concept 
of a God, taste and see that the Lord is good. But it's not just this superficial meditation idea. It's it's get down on it, spend some time with it, chew on it, let that lozenge kind of kind of dissolve slowly into your mouth. There's another idea that Peterson talks about as a guy who's sitting uh, at his desk and he reads something and he, and he closes his eyes and he puts his hands behind his head and leans back in his chair and he and he just lets the the words that he just read just kind of filter just kind of sit there for a little while and just stew on them and think about them before he opens his eyes and reads some more that's the way we should approach scripture and if you're not doing that friend just start take psalm 34 okay and it's short but it's my like my my passage because 3418 is the promise that got me through losing my son. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Start with 34 and just spend a little time there. But don't just read it quickly and check the box. Put some of it in your heart and in your head. Write some of those verses down. Take them to work with you. Pull them out a few times and, and, and just gnaw on them a little bit. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's Hagah, my friend. It's good. It's good to gnaw on it. It's good to, to worry over it. It's good to to sort of spend time with it and sit with it and, and bury it and come back to it later. That's what you're supposed to do with the Word. I would challenge you to find any book that will make a different or bigger impact in your life than the Word of God. And I would challenge you, my friend, to start today. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. That's patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren, .substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.